I was just saying, well done, and when I grow up, I also want to be the Planet and Environment Director. I think that's awesome. So, um, and I also want to actually encourage my children to look at the X Prizes. Um, I have a studying biologist um, at St. Andrews University, so I'm going to encourage her to look at that um, for the rainforest. Um, but very good morning to everybody, um, and I really am very privileged as well to be standing here today. Um, I do not work and have never worked for PNG, but I love the partnership that we have with the Coca-Cola company and PNG, and I'll share some of the work that we're currently doing together. But I also feel a very special connection because I have a few team members that have been PNG talents that we've been very successful in recruiting, um, and they're doing a fantastic job. And one of my bosses was an ex-PNG person as well, so I'm very privileged to be around a lot of you already. Um, but I just want to share a little bit about my journey and the journey that I've um, embarked on with the Coca-Cola company. So I am of Greek descent, born in a beautiful country on the African continent called South Africa, um, and hence the South African accent with a Greek name. Um, but I'm very proud to be working with the Coca-Cola company. I've been with them since, um, for the last 20 years. I started my career in Coca-Cola in South Africa, and since then I've worked with them in five countries with my family, so we've worked and played in three different continents. I have an enormous passion for learning um, and traveling, um, and with the company and with my family, we've traveled to, well, I have, not all of them, um, have traveled to about 84 countries around the world. Um, and in one of my travels, I noticed a sign that actually said, save everything. Um, and when I came back to the company and to my home, I actually shared that because it really impacted me. And I said that what we need to do is save everything. Um, so hence the reason why I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've done. And at the Coca-Cola company, we started our journey about 130 years ago, and we made brands people love, um, and we made them available everywhere. And we knew that this was our, masic, our magic recipe. However, we know that things have changed, um, and we need to put not just our brands at the epicenter of everything that we do, but actually change and put people and communities in the heart of everything that we do. And we know that if we have the right leaders and we create the right culture, we'll definitely create shared opportunity for everybody. And how we do business is just as important as what we actually make. Um, and we know that stakeholders around the world are actually looking at us, looking at companies like Coca-Cola, P&G, Unilever, and PepsiCo, to actually look at how we are leveraging sustainability to drive business decisions. And we know that consumers, if we actually engage them right, want us to help them make a difference. Investors are looking at organizations like ours and looking at how they're going to invest and if companies are actually being responsible enough to address social issues. And if you want to attract the right talent, that future talent, like my daughter, um, we need to ensure that we actually create a sustainable company. And customers are reaching out to all of us to actually say, let's partner together to ensure that we achieve our goals. Um, and our bottling partners are actually setting aggressive targets. In fact, Coca-Cola European Partners, a couple of weeks ago, actually announced targets way ahead of the company and other bottling partners um, around the world. So they're actually pushing the boundaries ahead of us. Um, and we know that international organizations and activists will continue to drive the agenda. I'm a huge fan of Greta's. I'm sure most of us in this room are. But even Greenpeace and other organizations are actually challenging the work that we do. Um, and over the last 130 years, this is not a new journey for the Coca-Cola company, we have created a sustainability agenda, really entrenched in everything that we do, and it has given us credibility. Whether it's the work that we've done with women, or the work that we're doing with water replenishment, or the well-being of our consumers, um, and the world without waste. So let's talk a little bit about the sustainability agenda that we've put together. Um, in terms of women, and actually, I'm not sure if Susan is in the room yet, but I think she'll be speaking um, a little later during the course of today. 
Um, but Susan, um, a PNG alumna, that's why I say that we're very well connected, um, actually worked on setting up this legacy for the Coca-Cola company. She actually led this um, for the organization. And we're actually living it um, through the work that Susan and the people before her have actually done. And we were committed. We know that women are exceptionally important to our operations and actually to the communities around in which we serve. And what we said in 2010 is that we wanted to economically empower 5 million women and around the world by 2020. And we're on that journey. We're not there yet, but we're definitely on our way. And I just, again, want to say thank you very much to Susan for all the efforts that she made um, in making this happen for the, uh, the Coca-Cola company. In terms of water, we want to replenish every single drop that we use. So take one in and give one back. And I'm proud to actually say that we're well on this journey. In fact, we've actually exceeded the targets um, well ahead of time. And then in terms of our portfolio, we need to make sure that we look after our consumers. We need to reduce our sugar. We need to make sure that we provide smaller packaging. We need to also offer more choice, um, not just sparkling and water and juice, but a variety of choice. Um, and we need to give information to our consumers so that they can make an informed choice as well. And then lastly, the world without waste. In 2017, um, we took a look around, and we weren't very happy with what we saw. We saw that a lot of our packaging um, and waste was landing up in the oceans around the world. Um, so we embarked on a different journey, and we actually launched World Without Waste in 2018. And in every single business unit around the world, we actually appointed a World Without Waste champion. In fact, the champion reports to me for Central East Europe, the 26 countries, although I only actually manage 13 of those. Um, but because I have a huge passion for this, um, I raised my hand and said, I'd love for that to actually come part of my team and be part of the agenda that I look after. That gentleman, Dimitris, is an ex PNG talent, so very well connected. Um, but he's doing a fantastic job. Um, and we have embarked on this journey. There's a lot of work still to be done. Um, and we know that we used to operate um, as a linear economy. We all did. I'm not sure why, though, because it didn't really have um, a, a sort of an end. It was just um, make, use, and waste. Um, and then we took a hard look and we said, what we really need to do is create a circular economy. We're really good at number one and two. So we know how to make, we know how to use. Um, but we really need to get better at collection and recycling. And although we have done quite a bit, we're not there yet. And we know that if we do number three and number four right, we can create jobs and stimulate innovation. Um, so our world without waste vision is really on three pillars, design, collect, and partner. Um, and leveraging new technology, we would definitely want to design better packaging to ensure that it is 100% recyclable. In fact, in some of our markets, in Central East Europe, 99% of our packaging is actually recyclable. Um, but we need to do more to ensure that the rest of the world is actually meeting that 100% target. In terms of collection, for every one package we put out there, we want to bring one back. And right now, we're actually at 56% of our target. So there's still a lot of work to be done around here. And in terms of partnership, we need to continue to work with global industries, NGOs, and government to ensure that we create the right partnerships to bring in and recycle. Um, and on this one, um, last year, six global organizations came together to look at how we were going to address the ocean issue. Um, two out of those six were Coca-Cola and PNG. It was the first investment fund that put in $90 million to actually start addressing this issue. So again, we are very well connected. Um, and in terms of progress around World Without Waste, we have done some good work. Um, um, we've actually, the plant bottle was something that we launched about 15 years ago, but we opened up the IP to the industry so that we could actually bring more people in, create more demand, which means more collection, more recycling. Um, and then just to take you through the journey, um, um, so we've also collected 
Uh, we've introduced more collection schemes and obviously partnered um, in some areas. But just to take you through my journey and the work that we're currently doing in Southeast Europe. And um, this is Romania. It's one of the 13 markets that I look after, um, the largest actually. Um, and then in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be launching 100% recycled PET. Um, for our hydration business. In some countries around the world, we were actually at 100% recycled PET across our entire portfolio, which is absolutely fantastic. In Southeast Europe, this is the beginning of the journey. But we have to go back to ensure that we collect, we have the right technology and, um, in place, and we recycle. So this is the start of the journey in Romania. And then going back to the African continent, um, where my soul actually lives, um, in South Africa. A few years ago, um, we came together as an industry um, to increase the recyclability or increase the recycling rates um, in the market. Um, at the stage, we were only um, collecting 10% of the PET that was being put out there. Um, and as an industry, we came together to say, if we do this right, we can create, it will be good for the environment, um, good for the people, and good for jobs. Um, and we put together Petco, uh, which launched um, a few years ago. 10% recycling now has gone from 10 to 70%. So take a look at some of the work that we've done. At Coca-Cola Africa, we care about the world you live in because it's ours too. Together with our partners, we're already collecting and recycling 65% of all PET bottles in South Africa every year. But we can do more. That's why we've developed the new Banaqua 500ml bottle made out of 100% recycled plastic to support a circular economy. And what's more, in keeping with the global rollout of our world without waste vision, $38 million over the next three years will be invested to stimulate plastic recycling industries across southern and east africa creating a further 19,000 new income opportunities we are determined to reach our vision and we want to do it with you be a global citizen and help us connect recycle and reuse join us at coca-cola africa and be the generation that will make a difference It's a great story, actually, and coming from South Africa, it's one that I'm really proud of. Now, going back to my roots, where I said my parents were immigrants um, coming out of Greece, and I have the opportunity, actually, it's the first time I've lived in Greece, um, and we moved there a year and a half ago. Um, so I have the opportunity now to actually manage the country as one of my 13 markets. But when the World Without Waste was launched um, as a global initiative, um, we were inspired. And we looked around in Greece and we said, what is it that we could do that could be different? Um, Thessaloniki is one of the second largest cities um, in Greece, and it is one that has the most waste. So we launched, um, under purposeful growth, an initiative called Zero Waste Future um, in Thessaloniki in conjunction with um, the municipality. Um, and we initially launched it at a fair, um, and thinking that this could be the start of something bigger. Um, we did a study, um, and we also opened up a laboratory where we actually brought students in so that we could teach them, around, um, um, teach them all about waste, recyclability, and collection. And then we started recycling um, around the beaches. And we found that this experiment was working, and it actually um, gave not just um, um, the communities in Thessaloniki are boost, but it was also actually good for the community, good for our people in the office, and good for our business. So we've actually now established it as one of our initiatives in the market, which will be rolling out in other markets in Southeast Europe. But in 2019, um, we've really broadened the initiative in Thessaloniki, and what we actually do is we take all the waste that we collect and we build furniture and the furniture is then placed either in schools, in the community areas, or on beaches. So in 2019, we've actually driven that even further. We collected waste in 30 beaches, and for the first time, if any of you are running the Athens Marathon next month, we'll have a zero waste um, uh, marathon as well. And in 2020, we're going to take the initiative outside Thessaloniki, we're going to move it into Athens, and then we're going to move it into some of um, um, the islands as well. We'll amplify our beach collection, 
And then we're going to partner with our customers. And like I said in the beginning, customers are reaching out, and we're reaching out to them as well to actually drive this agenda. And we leave this, and we believe that this could actually be a game changer for us in Greece, especially when we partner with our customers in this market. Um, and lastly, I think we need to be bold as well. We need to call out to our consumers, please help us recycle. Um, it is bold, it is different, um, but it will actually help us to actually bring back and collect and save everything um, to reach that 100% target of one in, one back um, of recycled plastics. Um, and I know this topic can be rather difficult. It could look a little bleak, um, but I actually choose to look at the bottle, half full, um, and say that this is our second chance. Our second chance to make a difference. Our second chance together to create the impact that we're looking for um, um, and make a difference in the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>